24 hours in Morocco and we haven't been shopping since we've been on the road, so we're gonna hit the Kia 4. After what was a cloudy start to the day, sun's out. So we grabbed a trolley and headed into the supermarket. There was a massive selection of herbs and spices and all different flavored olives. Lots of fruit, huh? Lots of fruit. Can't have too much fruit. We, our favorite breakfast, oh, that reminds me yogurt as well. Is, well, I mean the boys' favorite breakfast is fruit and yogurt and a little bit of I'm a bit partial to it yeah, now, but, oh, We got you on it, have we? Dragon fruit, we don't see this at home very often. Very often, I've never seen dragon fruit at home. <laughs> I can't tell what's ripe. I don't know this fruit. I don't know if it's ripe. In fact, I've never seen that in any country we've been to. No. <laughs> I don't know what it is, though. A couple of those to try. Okay, I'm going to have to Google this. Hopefully, you just treat it like mango or something. <laughs> if you know that that's going to be wrong, leave in the comments how you deal with this. <laughs> do you reckon two? Yeah, get a couple. And is yellow more ripe than green? Who knows? I can confirm you can get pork in Morocco. There you go, we might even find bacon. I guess that means Pepsi. They had a fresh sushi bar in the supermarket. And although I'm not partial to a bit of sushi, Lindsay and the boys love it. It was fascinating to watch the guys making it. I didn't know there was such an art to put together sushi like that. And this whole tray was just eight pounds. <laughs> How's the fruit? This is dragon fruit. Eddie's definitely had it before when he was in Malaysia. Says it's beautiful. So I've done both of them and we can eat more now. Dragon fruit looks good. Mm. Quite sweet. Yeah. What's yeah. it remind you of? Um, Reminds me of kiwi. Kiwi, yeah. I see the resemblance. Just pink. Right. Also, I heard you could get wine at the Carefors, so I asked about it, and he said, "Yeah, you have to go out the store and round the back," and I went through a dodgy-looking entrance, um, and it just looked a little bit <laughs> iffy and a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know. But anyway, we bought the wine. Um, and it's a lot more expensive than you'd think. Um, it's probably more expensive than UK prices for spirits and wines over here. We drove through the walls and into Morocco's capital city of Rabat. Driving in Morocco is a different ball game and some of the cities were challenging. Like this little maneuver I had to do here to get across and through the oncoming traffic to the other side, but not directly across because of the raised pavement in the middle of the road. The secure parking we were looking for was just on the left there, so I headed up the road to turn around, and as I entered the car park, it all went wrong. You see, this overhang here was about to ruin my day. I got waved in, then these two guys were watching me at the front, whilst another was watching my rear. He was telling me to get as close to this car as possible before making my turn. He then told me to turn, and that's when it all went wrong. So we've definitely done some damage coming in. Let's have a look. And there it is. A war wound on the motorhome. Yeah, that's expensive. Well, there's an expensive accident right there. We were being guided in by two different people. One at the front and one at the other front. <laughs> one on the front right, one on the front left. And uh, Well, there was a guy on the back. Oh, there was back. a guy on the back as well. Who was on the back? The other guy over there, uh, man. Okay. What was he doing? We're not f***ing looking. Yeah. Yeah, the guy at the back was then the guy at the front to stop. Clearly, I'm not very happy. I can move this motorhome in any space you like, but watching one guy at the front, one guy at the back, calling out things, that wouldn't have happened if I'd have just done it myself. I'm really pissed off with them. Well, it's damaged now. Let's go and enjoy Rabat. We're parked right here. It's secure parking in Rabat. Um, it's not expensive, but the gates do close at 10 o'clock, so we've got to be back before then. And then we're going to move right over there. But it has also got um, a toilet in the corner there, and we will leave a link in the description. So we were parked just here, and I did my research where the best markets were in Rabat. We were going to start at the central market, and would make our way along the Rue Souk. Then we would go up to the old market on Avenue des Consoles, and to the Andalusian Gardens. And then on to visit the old Medina and the Casbar of Eudeus. As we wandered down the Rue Souk, we were taken in with the atmosphere all around us. The hustle and bustle of the street vendors encouraging you to look at their wares. I'd seen the Moroccan markets on film before, but we were actually here, and it was fantastic, just how I'd imagined it. Madness, total madness. Harry's football mad and he loves his football shirt, so I was on the lookout for a new one. We must have gone into 20 different shops looking at the shirts, with Harry questioning the quality and pointing out the errors of the poorly replicated tops. Also, Eddie, who's almost 18 now, has been paying more attention to what he wears over the past couple of years and is particularly keen on nice trainers. So again, he and Harry were looking at all the dodgy copies and pointing out the mistakes on the Nike Air Force Ones. We spent a good hour mooching through the old Medina. We actually took a walk down Rusuk, 
back and then in through the old Rabat market and had a look at the ancient ancient areas. There was a lot of tourist tat on offer and we're very interested in the football kits <laughs> and maybe some of the... There's all sorts of stuff down there that we're interested in. But we're, uh, we're not buying on the first day. We've got plenty of cities and plenty more places to see. We've come for a rest in the Andalusian Gardens. This is a gorgeous, it was really tranquil, you may be able to hear some drumming now, a gorgeous tranquil garden here. Um, it's got loads of tropical flowers, there's loads of places just to sit and contemplate and lots of shade too. This is my first sample of mint tea and I'm really enjoying it. Proper mint tea, not the, the bag stuff that we get at home. It's very sweet though, a lot of sugar. So this whole area at the top is called Udeas, or is named after the Udeas. And this little spot where we've just had tea is gorgeous. If you fancy a sweet treat, come up and have a try of their biscuits. They've got some really beautiful looking biscuits from Adam yet. Might come back. We've been round, wandering round and round. We never decrease in circles trying to get to the Casbah. <laughs> All this for a burger van, I tell you. We're in a restaurant called Suffler and reading the menu, back to front, um, there's a little explanation of where the name comes from and it basically means traveller's meals, but it also represents hospitality and generosity, which I think is lovely. That was absolutely delicious. Eddie had the beef muklaba. George and Harry both had shawarma kebabs. Steve had a mixed grill and I had a hummus vine leaves and a salad starter. The salad was mainly parsley with a little bit of tomato and onion chopped through. Very tasty. It's funny they have a fake little, which is a middle market using the little logo. Very funny. Everywhere on the streets we saw vendors selling sweet treats like baklava and loads of other interesting looking pastries that look very tempting. Although we did see many wasps buzzing around in the cabinets which was quite off-putting. Yeah, we saw the wasps flying around yeah. them earlier, didn't we? the back of the bird and all the sweet yeah. products like that. Do you remember when we were in Dubrovnik and they had like one piece of fruit that they were almost like sacrificing to the wasps? Right, yes. On each one, that's what they need that's to do. That's what they do. need to do. And another walk down the Rue Suica, if that's how you pronounce it. Definitely worth a visit if you come in here. You've got to check this street out. An interesting array of nuts and all kinds of maybe not so interesting stuff here. Hey, and colourful and wow. Right, so we've come into a shop and the boys have all got a little bit carried away with the Ralph Lauren polo shirts and t-shirts that they'll do for school. Call to prayer. It's amazing. Then we came across this rather interesting looking machine and he was making and selling drinks. So being thirsty and rather intrigued to see how this contraption worked, we asked for five drinks. He takes a length of sugar cane, splits the end and adds a lime into it. He then slowly feeds the sugar cane into the machine whilst the juice then started to come out of the bottom and through a filter into the jug below. He poured us each a cup of his juice and we continued to try it. That's really good. I must say it's one of the most refreshing and tasty drinks I've right. ever tasted. It was beautiful. It tastes like lemon. It's quite refreshing, isn't it? Do you know what that tastes like? That tastes like the top of my lemon cream pie. Right. <laughs> they were awesome. And it was five dirham, which is about 40p. We continued through the markets, taking in the atmosphere, with Eddie and Harry now moved on to looking at the different knockoff watches that were on offer. Morocco's capital city of Rabat is an amazing place to visit, day or night. We enjoyed the hustle and bustle of the markets and exploring the old Medina. There's something here for everyone. And we're back to our van, and we will address the damage issue in the morning. But first off, he wants me to move the van over here. So we're just waiting for these cars to move out, and I'm gonna back the van in over there, but I'll be doing that on my own without his help. Good morning. We've woken up to a mild 24 degrees right now and it's only going to raise to 26 degrees. So the weather's just beautiful. It's lovely and pleasant. It really, really is. But we've also woken up to the issue with the motorhome this morning. And of course, there's nothing more been troubling me all night about the damage caused when that guy navigated me in incorrectly yesterday. So look at it here. There's the damage. It has broken the seal. Now, 
I want to turn this into a positive. Now I've seen on Facebook that many, many people have had damage to their camper vans, to their caravans, and it's been fixed perfectly. So please get in the comments and let me know if you've had damage like that caused and how it was fixed. And in fact, email us some photos, romanradfords at gmail.com. Email some before and after photos. And let's turn this into a plus and a positive and show you how we can fix this and get this looking like new. Now this place is just a car park, as you'll see. Um, we're parked over here. It's not the most pretty looking thing. There was a load more camper vans parked over here yesterday. They've gone this morning, but it really is convenient for visiting Rabat. So we're going to leave a link in the description. Um, there are even services over in the corner over there. There is a toilet to use and you can empty your Elson in there as well. Um, and I think they've got fresh running water, so it's not too bad. And I think it's inexpensive, but I don't know until I check out. Although I'd hope they wouldn't bloody charge us because of the, the damage caused on the way in, but we'll see. So Lens has already got the seats ready for traveling this morning. I want to talk to you about these water bottles. We got these from Costco and I was looking for a mount to be able to hook them in there but then I discovered the handle simply hooks over the top and they stay on there perfectly so it's been great for travel and keeping everyone rehydrated because we're off grid it's hot to sleep so it took me ages to get off to sleep and then uh 4 30 a.m the call to prayer <laughs> that was oh. Yes, you do hear a that. A rude awakening. It is a rude awakening, but we but need to get used to that, I guess. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It was, um, it was just, uh, I'd only been asleep for a couple of hours. So. <laughs> no vlog would be complete without a quick tour of the facilities. So up these steps here, you have a little toilet with a wash basin. And that's about it, but it's all you need to use the loo or empty your toilet in there. Right, we're going to hit the road now. Um, we was going to go to Casablanca, but... We did a city stop last night, so we do need showers, we need to do some washing and stuff like that. So Lindsay's found us a little campsite by the sea. Yeah, I decided we need to slow down and have a holiday day. Hmm. Foot down, let's go find the beach. Also, because of the damage on this, I just want to put closure to this vlog, so we'll see you on the next one. Yes, he did charge us 100 dirham for the damage, which is about nine pounds.